it's the art of uh, storytelling and this is the types of stories we're going to look at next. Um, this is an interesting one because the types of stories there, I'm talking specific about how you attack a story now, is really to look at two main types that I'm going to discuss. But the first thing that I started mentioning at the beginning of the show was how we talked about those story beats. So if you have um, a post-it pad handy or you have uh, library cards, it's a good idea to start by writing down what it is that your story is about. So put a few ideas down. You've got an idea of a theme. You have some thoughts around what it is that you want to impart or what you have to land with your audience. And so you start by just creating those story beats. So somebody who was fantastic in creating story beats, of course, was um, the wonderful Walt Disney. So he started because animation movies were just so insanely expensive to produce. Uh, you have to draw some 24 frames uh, every every second and you know if you start making a character move it's something that could take artists months to build sequences and he was the, the guy to start by making storyboards and I also want to suggest that if you are ever stuck with a story or where to start telling the story to start by also drawing something um, sometimes we connect with different bits and pieces of an idea when we draw it rather than to try and find words to describe it. In fact, I find a lot of time on my, my notes that I make that I would use little emblems that are just some kind of icon that would remind me of a whole concept. And so this is a good way to just start the brain off by putting some ideas there. And now, once we've had all of the thoughts that we want to share, let's go and take a look at how those two types of stories turn out. So generally when we write, there are really these two kind of, of stories. And the first one is an anecdote. And if you go and look at what the, the thought around an anecdote is amusing or interesting story about a real incident or real people, um, and usually it's something that is a short little tale of something that happened today, something that I want to share with you. And the real place to use an anecdote is to see if you can um, land something fast. So sometimes while you're presenting an idea, you're looking for a quick metaphor and in that you could come up with an anecdote. If you were writing a book, then probably an anecdote was going to be a sentence or two. So it's a quick little thing and I demonstrate it by saying it is kind of like the guy who got off the bus, forget his, forgot his hat and <laughs> land the idea. So they are almost kind of metaphors for, for thoughts. And this is kind of the first the first type of story that you can employ. And the other one is, of course, a, an actual more detailed story. So a structured sequence of events that will help you to build this memorability. So if you compare the two there, you see a short musing on the one side, an anecdote. It's something quick, two or three sentences even. And then you just land the idea. It's fleeting. It's not going to be somebody something that somebody will remember, where a story is a little bit more structured, it connects and it is memorable and probably in the bigger picture of things, it's something that you want to land so that it becomes repeatable. And that's why you're gonna craft those. So we're gonna talk a little bit more in the rest of the show tonight about how you craft those stories and what kind of devices there are that you can bring into the space so that you make those work. Let's go and look quickly at a list that I found about the kind of um, simplicity of story. And uh, you want to be clear about your, your purpose. At the outset, you want to figure out why you're telling this story to this audience at this time. So it's a very specific and deliberate kind of departure point. You also want to look at common reference points that your audience will connect with and they, that contextualizes the story that you're working through. And then you start looking at your rhythm and your pacing, clear beginning, middle and end. And how do you segue into this thing that you want to share with them, your topic? And then, of course, is it relatable? Now, there are some ideas around pitfalls uh, that I've seen people fall into. And I thought it's worth talking about the kind of pitfalls um, that people have. Like sometimes you get those kind of movies and, and uh, I, people who know me, Petri, would know that I often talk about movies in the list. I see if I, in the show, I can mention at least once during a show, The Lord of the Rings, right? And that is one of those movies where you go, uh, I feel that as a viewer, I'm a little bit ahead sometimes. And you know how it is if somebody tells a story and it feels as if you constantly are a little bit ahead of it. And it feels like 
uh, after a while you don't feel that you're smart anymore, you just feel that the story is stupid, or you just feel that the story is not connecting with you. So you want to be careful if you're going to look at some of these pitfalls, you want to be careful that the viewers aren't ahead of you. You don't want to make it too complex, and you don't want to be too frenzied or let the story roll out too fast because you are then going to, um, again, lose the audience. Now, something suspension of disbelief is something I also want to pause at for a moment. You know, um, in the film language, we talk about suspension of disbelief. When we tell a story about vampires, vampires can't be in the light. Daylight kills them. They have to sleep in a coffin, yada, yada, yada. So there's a world that's set up. And that is what we do when we begin with a story. There's a certain amount of suspension of disbelief when we tell a story. So even if it's a story that you want to relate about uh, traveling to work in the morning, if you started by saying something and saying, this is how I travel in the morning, you have seen setting something and immediately your audience buys into that suspension of belief moment and they're traveling in the car with you. Now, if you start saying something that's out of character or you start talking about a kind of speed, ludicrous speed that you're traveling when they know that you can't do that in the traffic, you're immediately beginning to break down or disconnect because of that. And you want to look at the suspension of disbelief because as you set up your story, there's a world that you create. And particularly if it's about fitness or health foods or something like that, and you want to use your own demonstration or your own life to demonstrate a point, you have to be careful that it is still truthful and it doesn't begin to sound so much like a fable that it actually distracts them. So truth is kind of a really important one here. I just thought to pause at that point. And as we get into the rest of them, your premise needs to be compelling and you have to uh, have a satisfying conclusion. And it's often a pitfall that somebody finishes a story and you kind of go by yourself. Really? Was that it? Uh, I'm not so sure about that. So you want to look at those pitfalls. I'm going to move straight on to some questions that you can ask yourself to keep the story on track. Who is the protagonist in this? In other words, who, who is the hero that you're creating? Is the hero the client? Is the hero a certain condition that you're sharing about the story? Or if there's a problem, is there a way that you can give this some personality? Because the moment you start doing that, a character evolves. And the moment a character evolves, as we said, we're going to talk about how that can connect with an audience. Then you want to go and look at want and need, which in storyline is always a very interesting thing because what, what we want is not always what we need. So sometimes somebody just wants to make a lot of money or wants to uh, be famous. But the truth is, in the background of that, there's another need, a need to just be recognized, a need to just have a comfortable life which doesn't necessarily have to relate to the, the, the want. So when you start telling stories, think about want and need on both sides of the scale because those are going to be thoughts that you're going to have around the story that you're telling to make your characters more interesting. Sometimes it's more interesting to deal with what the character knows that they want, but in the background you help the audience to see what the character really needs. The moment that you start doing that, you're creating more intelligent characters and you're creating more depth in your character. And this is our first layer to start connecting, to have interesting characters. So we're going to take a break shortly and then after the break we're going to come back and talk about characters that connect and why they connect better if you do certain things with them. The last one on that slide was really also a question to say, what happens at the end? And we're going to focus quite a bit still tonight on how you make something work right until the end, because if you have the end in mind, there's a better destination for your story.